Hello and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Well, this is it. This is Snow Brothers. It was another game that was recommended by a YouTuber. And I'll be honest, this is totally not the sort of game that I would play. There's so many reasons which a game like this would never appeal to me. But I also accept that there was a time when games like this were insanely innovative. Now, this game, Snow Brothers, was released in 1990. It was published by Capcom, so they knew what they were doing. Capcom of all things, with further conversions being made for home, ver uh, home consoles by Tengen, particularly for the Mega Drive version as you've seen on the screen. Now the system itself, it was released onto other platforms that we'll talk about later on, but it was released in 1990. So I would go as far as to say that um, computer games became a little bit more sophisticated by 1990 when this game was arrived. As you can see on the screen, we're looking at the instructions on how to play this game. And again, at first when I saw this game playing, I thought this game was going to be quite simplistic, almost um, Donkey Kong-esque in its tactics of jump over barrel, ladder, barrel, ladder. But the more I saw it, the more I can see that this is like a, a really intensive version of Bobble Bobble or Bubble Bubble or whatever name people want to give it. The game itself centers around the idea that you play as a snowman. You convert your enemies into snowballs and then utilize those snowballs as weapons. This game has bosses, it has a sophisticated point system, it has got a lot going for it that made me think, do you know what, maybe I've been harsh. So I'm definitely looking forward to playing Snow Brothers with Nick and Tom. Also, the game's a two player, uh, which is quite nice indeed. But first things first, how about we get some credits in this bad boy? Because I haven't put a credit in. So let's get something here. So there's the instructions of what we do. Also, the game's listed as a three button console, but I'll be interested to see. The music is bizarre. Okay, so I know what A and B do. These are the ones where I would throw snowballs, but of course, I need an enemy to throw the snowball at. And I already died, so I shouldn't really complain about the game if I'm not clever enough to play it. Now, from what I see, I've got to get the snowball as high as possible in the hope that I can create that staggering effect to take out a bunch of enemies. Let's have a look. Oh, I hope that. Okay, so we're at the next stage. So this is a progressive ladder system, okay. Now that felt good. Fair play to the game. That did feel successful. Is the game going to let me get that power up? Yes it is. What does this power up do? Okay, and I can actually move these up. That's quite nice. Not a single enemy. Do you know what? I'm starting to enjoy this game already. I take it all back. I can see why this game could be appealing. Let's see. And we're at the next stage. Okay. Again, I have yet to see the, the word Capcom anywhere on this game. So I'm starting to question whether Capcom were in any way involved in this. I'm assured that they were. But for all I know, someone's pulling my chain. Oh, dear. Hopefully I've got one more life there. Let's have a look. Getting better. Foolish play on my part there. Is the game going to let me continue at least? Let's have a look. I'll be honest, that's quite Fallout-esque. But nevertheless, get, at least it lets me continue from where I left off, which is quite nice. Here's a question. Do the enemies actually escape the snowball? Oh, wow. That snowball went blue. Is that if you get a double snowball? Okay, I believe we might be onto something here. Let's 
And at least the game gives me the opportunity to pick up that. No, I think, don't get me wrong, I'm hardly going to call this game sophisticated, but it has a certain quirky charm. It does. Plus the music's quite compelling as well. Oh, hello. What do we have here? Okay, so we know what that power-up does. It's giving me insane speed. And here we are at another section. This speed potion, whatever it is, still appears to be working. Cool, just the one fella left. Let's see if we can settle his hash. Oh, evil pumpkin. That's new. Not sure what he's for. Poor work on my part. You know what? Let's get to trivia. Because let's face it, this game seems like it's much fun, more fun to play than it is to watch. And if I was in an arcade waiting to put my coin in the machine, that wouldn't have been fun to watch. But it is actually quite an impressive game. It feels the, the speed of the game is quite good. I didn't feel cheated. Every single time I died there, it was my error, not the, not the game. So I'll give it that. There were a number of times with Pac-Man where I always felt like the game kind of screwed me a little bit. But that didn't feel like it was the game's fault. That felt very much like it was my error. But... Let's talk trivia and facts. I did find quite a lot of stuff out about this game. Firstly, once again, the game was developed by Toplan with a um, console version created by Tengen and the publisher of it being Capcom. Now, it was utilizing um, the old engine there of the upright arcade cabinet, so it wasn't really their bespoke systems, but we'll talk about that in a second. But it was released in 1990 with follow-ups in the arcade, obviously, uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System, NES, Game Boy, the Mega Drive, as already mentioned, the Amiga, iOS and Android, so it even made it to modern mobile platforms. On top of that, the game also are bootleg versions of the game out there, much like Street Fighter had its own bootleg following, but that's known as the Winter Bobble, which obviously is a slight nod of the hat to Bobble Bobble, and the fact the game is very similar in its sprites and a lot of the d dynamics of the game. Now, if, it ta if a player takes too long to complete a stage, we kind of saw something about this earlier, an evil pumpkin head will appear and try to kill you. So if you're taking too long, rather than a timer to screw you, the game puts an evil pumpkin to screw you, obviously. Now, the pumpkin itself is invincible, but it can be stunned with snowballs, just like any other enemy. But after a short time, the evil pumpkin will spawn even more um, ghost pumpkins, which these are transparent and they can't be killed. And all they'll do is keep moving around until they touch you and kill you. So the idea is to kill all the other enemies to get to the next screen. But that does seem a bit of a cheap way to screw you. But on the other hand, it's a little bit more strategic than timers. So at least you feel like there's something you can do against that. On top of that, Snow Brothers was licensed to Ocean Software based in Manchester for both a conversion of the Atari ST and a Commodore Amiga version for their home computer. However, like Liquid Kids, the other popular game from them, um, again, you've asked about that, it will come, um, Ocean decided that the game wouldn't perform well at retail, which I find very surprising. Depends what year they're talking about. If that version came out after about 92, then I would be inclined to believe. But let's face it, if, this, if we're talking the Atari and we're talking the Commodore home computer, um, the, yeah, the Commodore home computer, then there's no way this wouldn't befit that dynamic. That was the kind of games there were prior to that point. After 92, it may have come across a bit too baby and a bit old, old fashioned. Um, but in the end, the game was cancelled, but it was still already made and it's available in the ROM community for completely for emulation, rather than you wouldn't have been able to buy it, but at least there you can still get to see what it would have looked like. Um, on top of that, the game was released as conversion kit only, hence why Capcom haven't got their own cabinet for it and their own ready-made uh, board. Uh, it was utilising the, it was JAMA compatible, J-A-M-A, -A, uh, the circuit board, we've talked about JAMA uh, consoles before, uh, arcade consoles, uh, the circuit board was one of the smallest ever made for this game. It was barely larger than a NES cartridge anyway, so the entire game was fit, fit on a cartridge that was fed into that uh, jammer compatible machine. Um, now the, the marquee shows Snow, as you can see there on the bottom of the screen, Snow Brothers with two snowmen and a couple of cartoon enemies there just fighting against them. But this game was pushing as much as possible this cartoony 
babyish exterior, even though the game was quite competitive. So it's nice they kept that cute thing, but at the same time, um, I think it masks a certain degree of aggression. Look at that over there. It's quite, there's something hidden and evil about that green monster. Now, killing all the monsters on a single level, um, with a single snowball, I might add, gives you a bonus of 10,000 points uh, to come, it comes down on the screen. But sometimes a glowing cake will appear and it, uh, instead of that. When the cake is collected, the game stops and four blue snowball creatures, the enemies, appear for a short time. If these enemies are killed, then they provide the letters S, N, O, W, or snow. Um, collect all four of those letters that are on screen to get an extra life. The glowing cake will also appear at other times during the game without that incredibly detailed Easter egg there. But it's lovely that a game in 1992 um, uh, had um, that uh, 1990 had that wonderful introduction of an Easter egg structure. Um, and lastly, the music itself. I've already commented on this. Um, the the music was so like compelling to a lot of people and it stuck in their heads that it actually got released as a limited edition soundtrack um, for the album. Out Zone Snow Brothers. It was an album release, 21st of October 1990. You can look it up, of a lot of game music, and that music featured. So, let's return to the game, shall we? I'm not sure how much longer I can make it. How many lives have I got? I've still got at least a life. I think we're looking at the possibility of some nice scores here. Ah, I believe we may have the snow. Oh. Wow, you have to be quick. So there you go. I didn't have to go through that ridiculous dynamic to get to the next section. I was told this game had bosses. Well, I do have super powerful snowballs, apparently. That's what she said, etc. Oh, look what you're doing. Don't look away from the screen, Andrews. I also quite like that the game has um, kept that S the O from snow on screen for me. That feels got oh no, flame to a s snowman. That's game over. Well, at least I get to input my name and I'm going to call myself ABC. But otherwise, that was Snow Brothers or Snow Bros, if you want to be detailed. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed watching that. If you want to see any, any other games on the channel, do pop it down there in the comments. There's that weird Fallout 3 type shutdown. If you want to see any other games, pop them down there. If you enjoyed this, click like and subscribe. But otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Cheerio. Bye, Nick and Tom.